In this video, we will look at the Tafel extrapolation technique. This is an electrochemical technique that can be used to determine corrosion rates. To understand the Tafel extrapolation technique, we will first briefly review the theory of corrosion kinetics. Corrosion is a process that generally involves at least one cathodic reaction and an anodic reaction. The cathodic and anodic half-cell reactions are independent of each other. In this diagram, depicting the electrical potential versus the current, the curves of the anodic and cathodic half-cell reactions are shown. This system tends to stabilize at the corrosion potential e which is the potential where the cathodic and anodic reactions occur at the same rate. Note that at e the current of both the anodic and cathodic reactions are equal to the corrosion current i -core. Here we are considering uniform corrosion. In this case, if the exposed metal surface area is known, we can obtain the corrosion current density by dividing the corrosion current i -core by this surface area. This corrosion current density is also termed the corrosion rate. Let us consider the example of iron corroding in an oxygenated electrolyte, where all reactions are under activation control. Here the anodic reaction is iron dissolution, and the cathodic reaction is the reduction of oxygen. The potential current relationships of these two half-cell reactions cannot be directly measured. We can measure the net current, however, here shown as a black curve, with the help of a three-electrode setup. Note that at the corrosion potential e -core, the measured net current is zero. Here, the anodic and cathodic current cancel each other out. The corrosion current is indicated with the red arrow. Let us plot the potential versus current curves for the logarithm of the absolute value of the current. In this representation, the corrosion current corresponds to where the anodic and cathodic curves intersect. Let's zoom in on this measured curve in the semi-logarithmic plot. The mathematical description of this measured curve is given by the following equation. It shows the relation between the net current in it and the potential E. Beta A and beta C are the Tafel slopes for the anodic and cathodic half-cell reactions, respectively. If we are sufficiently far from the corrosion potential along the anodic branch, we can neglect the second term, which describes the cathodic current. This is because the influence of the cathodic reaction becomes negligible. If we now rewrite the simplified equation and take the logarithm, we can see that far from the corrosion potential, the curve becomes linear in the semi-logarithmic scale. The anodic Tafel slope beta A is the slope of this linear region of the curve. The same holds for the cathodic branch. The negative of the cathodic Tafel slope beta C is the slope of the linear region of the cathodic part of the curve. Now we come to the key idea of the Tafel extrapolation technique. If we measure a sufficient portion of the black curve, we can determine the linear Tafel lines and extrapolate these to the corrosion potential. The current on the Tafel line at e core equals the corrosion current i core. Generally, both branches are used for this extrapolation. However, it's also possible to only measure and extrapolate one Tafel slope to the corrosion potential, as shown on the right. Often the cathodic branch is used, as it tends to produce a longer and better defined linear Tafel region than the anodic branch. The previous example showed the case where both the anodic and cathodic branches were under activation control. However, sometimes the cathodic branch is diffusion controlled. In this case, the branch reaches a plateau defined by the limiting current. For this special case, the Tafel extrapolation technique can still be applied as shown here. 
To apply the Tafel extrapolation technique, there are several requirements that have to be fulfilled. First, only two half-cell reactions should take place during the measurement of the curve, one cathodic and one anodic. Second, corrosion should be uniform. And lastly, the Tafel region must be well defined. This means that we must have clear linear regions from which we can determine and extrapolate the Tafel slopes. Ideally, these regions are purely activation controlled and thus are linear in the logarithmic plot. To capture this linear part, generally the Tafel region should be measured over at least one decade of current. An important limitation of the Tafel extrapolation technique is that the measurement may modify the system under study. During the extensive polarization away from the corrosion potential, relatively high currents are applied, which means that the environment and the metal may be altered during the acquisition of the curve. This should be taken into account in the experimental design and in the interpretation of results. Additionally, the technique is sensitive to the measurement methodology. For instance, the sweep rate during the measurement may influence the results. Depending on the system under study, it's also important to remember to take ohmic drops into account. Finally, it must be admitted that the technique is quite subjective to the user who has to select the linear region in the measured curves that then serves as a basis for the extrapolation. In this video, we've seen that by measuring a potential current curve and plotting it in a semi-logarithmic scale, the anodic and cathodic Tafel slopes can be obtained. By extrapolating these Tafel slopes to the corrosion potential, we can determine the corrosion current.